Today we're going to be in the book of Philippians. Everyone say Philippians. Philippians. Philippians, it's a great book. It's one of my favorite books, and it is written by Paul. Everyone say Paul. 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 Come on, say it louder. Paul. Paul. I know it's morning, July 4th, hot dogs, burgers on the way, but, you know, let's get ready for, 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 for the word. Um, and so it's written by Paul, and when he's writing this, he's not writing it you know, from an ideal place, right, as, you, as one would say. He's not writing it from, you know, a coffee shop or a Starbucks or anything like that. He is under house arrest, right? That's not an ideal place to be. And he's in a house arrest in Rome. So he is here and he is writing to believers in a church that he had established in the city of Philippi. So this is where we're at. He is writing and he has already been a Christian for about 25 to 30 years up until this point. And so that's, that's quite a, a good amount of time, is it not? Yes. Um, and so he is writing to the church in Philippi, writing to the believers in Philippi to encourage them, you know, keep up their joy, keep pushing forward. And so today we are going to be in chapter 3 of the book of Philippians, right? And we'll touch more about Paul um, as we continue with our reading today. But Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 and on, it says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Amen? Um, so what's happening here? We know it's Paul that's writing these words. We know that he's writing these words under house arrest in Rome. We know that he's been a Christian for about 25 to 30 years up until this point. And Paul is writing to believers. He's not writing to just random people on the street. He's writing to a church that he has established in Philippi. And another quick little note here, he hasn't been in the church um, of Philippi because, you know, there was no internet, there was no live stream services, right? They were in there, um, and, and so he hadn't been in the church of Philippi for about 10-ish years, right? And so there was real great love between Paul and that church. There's something really special in that church. That church was also made up pr predominantly of Gentiles, so pretty much they were not Jewish people, right? And so Paul loves these people. And Paul is writing to them, and he's clarifying a few things and encouraging them along the way. And the first thing that he is clarifying is that he has not reached perfection, right? We see in verse 12, the, ver the first half of verse 12, we see um, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. So Paul is, is making it clear that he had not reached perfection a level of perfection, right? Everyone say, that's nice, right? Paul, 25, 30 years in the ministry, and he is letting the believers know, I have not made it yet. I have not arrived yet. Now, why is this important in this time? Because in this time, right, just like today, there, there's different views on, you know, what is life? What is Christianity? What is uh, a real beliefs, right? And in this time, right, Paul knew very well what it was to be a Jew, right? He was in Judaism his entire life to the point where he can compete with anybody, right, as far as that standard of what the Jews held in that time. And we can read it if we go to chapter 3, Verse 4, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. 
circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Right? So he, his resume, right, um, in Judaism was nice. It was pristine. And he even says it, right, in verse 6, under the law he was blameless. So you could say that outside of Christ, in his religious belief, he had already made it, right? And this was something that would filter, right, the churches of this time that followed Christ because that's just what, ha- that's just what happened in this time. And so especially with a, Gentile, a predominantly Gentile church, the belief was you first have to look like us, be like us, act like us, and then God's grace will help you out, right? And so these people were called the Judaizers. Everyone say Judaizers, right? And this hadn't fully formed in the church of Philippi. And so Paul, what he's doing here is simply just giving them a preemptive warning to let them know, hey, if this ever starts creeping in because it's crept in in the other churches that Paul had already established, Make sure that you know that I have not made it yet. I have not arrived yet. I haven't gotten there. I haven't reached perfection. Like these people say, you can. You can, right? And that's encouraging for believers even till this day, is it not? Tell the person next to you, it's okay. You're good, right? And so in in the first half of verse 12, it says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. Okay, well, what is this, this, right? What is the this that Paul is referring to? If we go to verses 3 and 11 of chapter 3, Paul lets us know what this, this is, right? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Let's make this very, very simple this morning. What was his goal? What did he want to attain? What did he want to grasp? He wanted Jesus. He wanted to know Christ fully. He wanted to be like Christ a hundred percent. He wanted Christ. That was his life's Go. And we read it right after he gives his crazy resume, right, in verse 7. But whatever gain I had, I counted it as a loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Insane, is it not? Paul's goal, yeah, build church, yeah, preach the gospel, yeah, but he wanted to gain Christ. He was going after Christ, and he's making it clear in the first half of verse 12 that he had not arrived yet. Hey, I'm being real. I haven't arrived yet, right? But did this discourage Paul? Did Paul say, I'm done with the faith, right? Man, I've been here 25, 30 years, and I have not reached perfection. Well, let's keep on going. Verse 12, the second half of verse 12. But I press on, everyone say press on, to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made me his own, has made me his own. Let's read that again. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Okay, we, we see that Paul recognizes and he's being clear. I have not reached perfection. I have not made it in the Christian life yet, Right? And the truth is, we will not reach perfection while we are on this earth. But this doesn't discourage Paul. This doesn't get him to take steps backwards and turn the other way and go back to his old life. But he presses on. He moves forward. 
He takes steps of progress, right? But I press on to make it my own. And we get the reason why. Why does he continue to keep going? Why does he continue to go after Jesus? Because Jesus has made Paul his own, right? This is interesting. Paul didn't grow up in a Christian church going to, you know, Sunday school where they taught about Jesus and, you know, Jesus, all, the, all these things. No, he grew up in Judaism, right? He studied under great Jewish leaders, right? And he thought he had reached perfection. He thought he had made it. I've done all the things that I was asked to do. I, I, I believed in the things that they told me to believe. I, I did the actions that I was told to do, right? And if we have any, any, you know, um, if we read Paul and we know of Paul, this guy don't play around, right? And so when he says, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless, right? I don't know any Pharisees, you know, of this time. I wasn't born in that time, right? But knowing the track record of Paul, he was real. He was legit, right? So when he says, hey, I was blameless, we, we have to assume this guy's not messing around. This guy was, he legit thought he was good, right? But he presses on towards Jesus because Jesus took a hold of his life. Paul was so zealous, right? He was so passionate about his previous belief system in Judaism, right, that he thought he was in the right to go and persecute Christians, right? Go and literally just try to stop the Christian faith. And in fact, right, if you hear his conversion story in Acts chapter 9, we see that Paul, which in that time his name was Saul, right, he was on his way to go and persecute some more Christians, right? We all know the story of, of, of Stephen, right, and him being, you know, um, just stoned to death. Well, Paul was there, right? Paul was there. He witnessed that. He was a part of that, right? He, that's what he did. But on his way, right, on the famous road to Damascus, we see Christ Jesus appear to Paul and his life does not stay the same. His life is radically changed, right? That's what happens when you encounter Jesus through his word. That's what happens when salvation is given to you. That's what happens when you, once you were lost and now you've become found. That's what happens when you were dead in your sins and you didn't know what you were doing and now you have been made alive with Christ. It's you're no longer the same person. Your desires are changed. Your mindset is changed. You, lo you no longer have, you know, certain goals that you used to have. Now your life revolves around one person and that is Christ, right? And we see it in the life of Paul. Paul did not stay the same. He completely changed his life, not through his own strength, but through the Holy Spirit. And we see it, and with the same intensity, Paul recognizes that Jesus Christ came to me. He turned my life upside down. He showed me that I was wrong. He, he, he revealed it to me. He opened up my eyes, and I now recognize that I need to do everything I can to serve Jesus, right? And so that's what he does with that same passion, right? With that same passion that he once had, he now uses that same passion all the much more to chase after Christ, to go after Christ. Why is this important? In the Bible, we, we see a lot of you know, metaphors being used to the Christian life and what the Christian life is all about. But here what Paul is doing, what Paul is writing um, to the church of Philippi, he is using himself as an example. This is what the Christian life is about. It's about pursuing Christ. It's about pursuing Jesus. And he's using himself as an example. And we see why, because Christ Jesus pursued him, got him, right? Made him his own. And now Paul, he's fueled up. He's ready. 
and he wants to take a hold of Christ, right? And it's super, super interesting, right? Get this. Up in his resume, right in verse 6, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. When Paul writes press on here in the second half of verse 12, that in the OG text, in the original text, right, it's persecute, right? It's, it's, it's persecutor. This is insane. Wait, what? Like, and so I persecute to make, no, he's showing that with the same intensity, with the same zeal that he once had towards the things that are not of God, he now has towards God. He, he's going after it. He's chasing after it, right? It's not easy. It's not easy at all. It's, it's difficult. Up until this point, it's not like Paul was cool and he had all these Instagram followers and all these different... No, this guy, no. People wanted to kill him. People were chasing him out of town. They did not want him around, right? But he is so passionate and he is so real and he has convictions that are all time to chase after Christ, right? When everyone else says no, he still continues on. Why? Because he recognizes what Jesus Christ did to him and for him. That's crazy, is it not? That's insane. And so we keep on going, right? Okay, well, well, why chase after Jesus? Why try to know him fully? Why, um, why want to be like Christ? If we go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29, written by Paul again, right, we see that this is our purpose. This is why God saves us in the first place. In Romans 8, 29, Paul writes, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, right, in order that he might be the first among many brothers, right? So, why did Jesus even have to show up in the first place? Why, what does he want to do with us? What does God want to do with us? He wants us to conform to the image of his son, right? And Paul clearly understands this. He's chasing after Christ. He wants to know Christ fully. He wants to look like Christ. He wants to be as Christ-like as possible. He wants to attain that perfection, but he recognizes he has not gotten there yet, but he's going to continue to push forward. He's going to continue to press on with everything that he has to take a hold of Christ. That's crazy, no? That's insane. We keep going, right? We keep going, and with the same intensity Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, and now we read it through the scripture reading. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an, unper an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. What is Paul saying here? Run to win, right? Don't, don't run casually. Don't run, you know, essentially like a, like a loser would run. Run to win. Because we're not just chasing a prize that's here today and gone tomorrow, right? We're chasing Jesus. He is our prize. He is what we run after day in and day out, right? And so he, you know, Paul is real, man. Paul keeps things real, and he is all out for Christ daily. And so we should have a desire to be more like Christ daily like Paul had, 
Paul was in ministry for already 25 to 30 years, and Paul is arguably one of the greatest Christians that's ever walked on the face of this planet. I don't know about you, but we're, we're not putting no more, by, more, more books in the New Testament. Paul had most of them, right? Paul was legit. Paul was real. And so if he hadn't arrived, that's a good question to kind of ask ourselves and ponder on. Man, and if he has this attitude, how much more of an attitude should we have, right, to chase after Christ daily? This is insane, right? This is insane. And so we can look back on his resume, see that, man, he, he had it in his, you know, way of thinking in the past. But now with Christ, it was no longer comparison among people, but now it was him comparing himself to Christ right? When we are saved and our eyes are opened and our heart is transformed and our mind is changed, we're no longer looking at the people around us, right? Christ becomes the standard. Christ becomes everything. We, will, we don't want to look like the person next to us. We want to look like Christ. We want to be like Christ. We want to know Christ fully. And we see this attitude that Paul is having, right? We keep on going in verse 13, brothers, right? Brothers, he's, he's making this personal, right? He, he's making this real with the church of Philippi. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. Again, recognizing, making it clear, I have not a- attained this yet. I haven't reached that level yet. I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't made it yet. I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, right? Tell the person next to you, stop looking back. Stop looking back, man, right? This is crazy because even if we look at the original Right? To make it sound just a little more kind of fluid in the English translation, but one thing I do, right? It's, it just says in the OG, but one thing, just one thing, just one thing, right? Making it, bringing an emphasis to it, bringing a, a humph, right, to it. But one thing, oh, Paul is telling us one thing. Paul is telling the church one thing here. Forget what lies behind and strain forward. To what lies ahead, right? Forgetting the past, forgetting what's been happening, whether bad or whether good, because we all know that sometimes the things that hold us back and give us to live complacent lives are not always the bad things, but sometimes our greatest victories in life, right? Paul had a lot of bad moments, but he had a lot of great moments in life. But he's not focused on any of that. He's not looking back at his past. He is, has one focus, and that is to look forward, to look towards the finish line, right? To gain that prize, to run, not, not, not you know, like he said in 1 Corinthians, not aimlessly. No, there is an aim. There is a goal. That is Christ, right? Tell the person next to you, it's Christ. It's Christ. So we see Paul recognizing, I have not made it. I have not attained it. I have not achieved full knowledge, right, in Christ. That's not going to discourage me. I'm going to keep going forward because Christ has been just so good to me, and he changed my entire life. He, he, he pointed out everything in my life. I was blind, but now I see. I was dead, but now I've been made alive. And so I'm going to keep going forward with a singular focus towards that finish line. He's painting a beautiful picture, using himself as an example, right, to the church in Philippi on how to live the Christian life. We keep going. Jesus in the gospel says in Luke 9, 62, Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Interesting, right? Interesting. Even Jesus makes a similar reference here. Verse 14 in Philippians chapter 3, 
I press on toward the goal. Again, tell the person next to you, press on. Now tell the other person, press on. I press on toward the goal for the prize. We all love a good prize, don't we? For the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul recognizes he hasn't made it. That does not discourage him. He keeps on going because of what Christ had done to him. He has singular focus towards the finish line because there is a prize. What is this prize? Christ Jesus. To have full knowledge of him. To be fully made, right, and conform to his image. That's the goal. That's the prize. That's what Paul here is saying. It's I am running as hard as I am running, not for recognition in this world, not to reach a blameless state in this world. No, I, I want to reach Christ. I, I want to know him fully, and I want to be like him fully. Again, painting this picture of what the Christian life is all about. Again, he uses press on. This is the second time he's saying this. He's writing this, right? Again, extra emphasis, right? A, a humph, right? I press on. Pressing on is not something, you know, chilling on the couch. The remote's a little too far, and you just kind of go like this. No, pressing on, using every muscle in your body to reach as far forward as possible. We see runners run, and they don't, you know, chill back. They run forward using everything that they have. They're exercising their entire body to attain the finish line and to be first. This is what Paul is saying here. This is what Paul is writing. He's pressing on. He's not being lazy. He's not being cool, calm, collected. No, his attitude is, I'm going to do everything in my power, right, to look more like Christ, to reach that finish line. We see that the prize is Jesus, right, going back to Romans 8, 29, conformed to the image of his son to fulfill that purpose that God has for each and every one of us. Pressing on does not mean to take it easy and to chill and to take off days, but to continue to move forward, right? Tell the person next to you, move forward. So, hey, move forward. Press on. Then we go to verses 15 and 16, and Paul writes, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will re reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Interesting, right? The word mature here in the original, it's perfect. So what he's essentially writing here is let, let those of us who are perfect think this way. A little confusing, isn't that? Because he just said, wait, I, I haven't reached perfection yet. Well, this is what Paul is writing here. If for whatever reason you think that you have made it in this life, if for whatever reason you think that you have, you're good. I've arrived. I'm good. Yo, I'm as Christian as could be. I, I can't get any more Christian than this. Paul is saying, hold up. Look at what I just wrote. Think this way. Think this way. Live this way. None of us have reached it, and none of us will reach it in this life. So what does that mean? We got to keep going. We got to keep pressing on. We got to keep running after not fame, not glory, not any of these things, but Jesus. Jesus Christ, to know him fully and to be like him fully. Interesting, right? Interesting. And so that's what Paul is doing here. That's what Paul is writing to them here. Again, 
It's not like they have taken over the church of Philippi. No, but he's just giving them that heads up. Hey, if this ever starts to creep in amongst the brothers and the sisters here, that, oh, you know, so-and-so has made it. No, tell them, no, think this way. Think this way. But then this is beautiful, and this is, you know, this just shows uh, Paul's heart, you know, of a pastor here. Let those of us who are, you know, mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, in other words, if for whatever reason, right, you don't, you don't care about what it is that I'm writing to you, for whatever reason, for whatever reason you don't think, you know, this example that I've shown you is, is, is good enough to, to a certain degree, that's cool. God will reveal it to you. God will show you, right? God will open your eyes. God will get you to understand that our goal in this life is not, or our purpose in this life is not to ever reach a comfortable state. Our goal in this life is to continue to chase and pursue and press on using everything that we have towards Jesus. So tell the person next to you, press on. Press on, keep pressing on. Then verse 16, only let us hold true to what we have attained. Paul giving them that encouragement, right? The things that were preached to them, the truth of Jesus, the truth of the gospel. Hold on to it, right? Stay consistent. Keep doing what you're doing each and every day. Any new thing that comes up, any new wave, any, anything, forget it. Only hold true to what you have attained. Paul encouraging them, right? Because we all know that. We have an obsession with new things and new ideas and new ways of living and so on and so forth. Paul's like, chill, right? Calm down. Only hold true to the truth of the gospel. And in the year 2021, we have the privilege, thank God, to have the truth with us, right? That we can always go back to, always hold on to. We, we have it here. Let us stay faithful and consistent to it. But this is Paul, right? Writing some very encouraging and also convicting few verses in Philippians, letting the church know to keep going, keep pushing, right? And this is difficult. Why is it difficult, man? Because the world is harsh. Hey, but Paul, man, he went through it. 25, 30 years in, I think I'm going to hang it up. No, he kept going. He kept going. He kept going. He kept going, using everything that he has, using every ounce of will that he had in his life. He kept going, right? Following what Jesus writes or Jesus says in the Gospels, Jesus telling the people, follow me. Paul took him at his word. <laughs> I'm going to follow Jesus. And that should be the same attitude, right, that we hold on to each and every day. It's not about just simply doing and, uh, you know, serving and, you know, doing the bare minimum, right? No, but it's about having this attitude that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, throughout the week, I'm going to be pursuing, I'm going to be pressing on towards the goal, which is Jesus Christ, right? This, this isn't boring, friends, right? This isn't a, oh, well, man, I just keep doing the same thing over and over again, I don't, no, oh, we, we have a long way to go, right? And this is what Paul is telling us. We have a long way to go. We will not get there in this life, but keep on moving forward. 
Every single day we can know more of Christ. Every single day we can be more like Christ. Every single one of us, we all know we have our things that we need to work on and and things that the Word of God, when we read it, brings conviction into our life. What Paul is simply saying here is keep going. Keep knowing Christ more and more and keep chasing after him and keep being more and more like him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray as we get ready for communion. God, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning, Lord, that you have allowed us to come and gather. And God, we're just thankful for your word. We're thankful because you are a good God. And God, we're here just saying thanks because you've opened up the eyes of, our, of us, Lord. You've, you've transformed our hearts. You've turned this heart of stone into a heart of flesh, and you've shifted desires in our, in our, mind, in our hearts, Lord. And God, if we've been complacent or if we've been just okay and comfortable, God, I, we just pray that we may have the same attitude that Paul had to continue to press on towards the goal to know you just more and more each and every day, to be more like you each and every day. Lord, we pray for our brothers and our sisters. Lord, if they need encouragement, if they need help, if they need someone to talk to, Lord, we pray that you may be with them and give them the peace that they're looking for, give them the grace that they're looking for. God, if there are people here that are not in the race, God, Lord, we pray that you may reach out to them as your word says that you came to seek and to save those, that which is lost, God. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we all say amen. Amen.